I think the major issues that uh, are facing civil society now are issues to do with governance, ensure, uh, providing adequate checks and balances to, to government. There are others, we talk about climate change, we, we talk about human rights, we talk about gay rights. These are new issues which are coming, environmental change, climate change, these are new issues which are coming. But uh, the ones that are really serious ones, practical ones and relevant ones at the stage at which we are in most countries in Africa have to do with uh, providing checks and balances to government, playing a watch to grow, and uh, social accountability, ensuring accountability from government to, 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 to the citizens. In that context, how important are the organisations that operate within the sphere of civil society in Malawi, in Malawi and other African countries? They are very important because uh, political parties are generally weak in many countries in Africa. And as a result, uh, ruling parties which form government have uh, too much power and they, they don't feel obliged to uh, be accountable to the citizens. Then uh, NGOs feel in that space to force, for lack of a better word, governments to, uh, be, to account to the citizens. So they play a key role. And then we are talking about a situation now of a global economic recession, global economic meltdown, where we are seeing less and less money from the north here in Europe and in America being committed to governments in, uh, in Africa and other poor countries. And that brings to, to the fore again the issues of complementing and supplementing because governments are generally failing. So NGOs are being asked, uh, are being looked up to to fill this role of providing services, uh, complementing, supplementing government efforts. But much more than that, uh, there's a lot of dissatisfaction by citizens. They've lost hope, they've lost direction from the government and they are looking, at, they are looking to civil society organizations as an alternative that would provide hope and direction to the citizens. So they are playing a critical, very important role, I would say. What would you say are the biggest issues globally that are going to impact on your emerging civil society in Malawi? Uh, I'll talk about two or three issues. The first one is the global economic meltdown. Just, last two, just the last two weeks, have been called upon by two international NGOs who come to Malawi, who are in Malawi, and they provide technical and financial support to local NGOs. Within two weeks, I've talked to three who called for their partners, and then we are talking about two main things. The first one is the reality that there is not much money being committed to development anymore. It's a different era. There's just not enough money being committed to development anywhere, anymore. And then local NGOs have to begin to think differently about how they're going to finance their work. And two, the little money which is available is going to be highly competed for if you're going to access it. Because the key word now is results. What results are you producing from the money that we are giving you? So NGOs have to think about, in terms of results-based management, and also they have to think about how do we diversify our funding base minus the honeymoon we had, I would say, from the bounty from the north in the past few, few years. Do you feel optimistic when you look at the challenges that you've just described? I think what it is pointing to is to say that, uh, and what we have learned so far, development will only come from the people themselves. Outsiders, including myself, somebody like me, a development worker who goes to villages to talk with my brothers, my sisters, my mother, my, my fathers, we can only facilitate. But real development will only come from the people themselves. I'll give you an example about uh, what happened in Malawi in July there was uh, a massive demonstration against 
the government, bad governance, economic governance, human rights governance against the government. For the first time, I saw it in Blanta, where I live. 150,000 people from all walks of life came and gathered in the street, in, in, in the city center, and walked to the civic center to, to, to leave a, a petition to the president on issues we want to see changed in our country. I was part of the organizing committee of that demonstration. It happened in all the areas, all the uh, regions of the country. And it was massive, it was historical, it was unprecedented. I was part of the organizing committee in the southern region, in Blanta, where I come from. I never saw in our, all our organization and the financial commitments, there was no money that came from international NGOs, there was no money that came from donors. The money came from the people themselves who went to work on the street. The small boys, street vendors, students, parents, business people, they brought together some resources and say, using this money, we're going to organize this demonstration. I want to think that uh, without dismissing the importance of aid, the importance of donors, the importance of NGOs, we still need them for a long time to come. But I want to believe that this, this should be the future, this is how we should move forward. What is the role over the next 5, 10, 50 years of the big NGO? The role of NGOs is to support local initiatives, not to do the work themselves. They should support local NGOs with uh, skills and with resources, and then give them the skills to mobilize people to stand up for their rights and to demand the change that the people want. We can only help, international NGOs can only help, they can't do the work.